I've been fortunate to write many books about art, architecture, and design. Um, but the first book I wrote, oh, by the way, please invest in a raffle ticket. If you win a copy of one of my books, I will inscribe it to you personally. Um, so I've written a lot of books about art and design and engineering, but um, my very first book was a self-published cookbook um, that is a collection of my grandmother's recipes that I wrote to honor her life after she died in 1988. And the cover is a pastel drawing that I did of a, a pastine tomato pan in her <laughs> kitchen. And it was a simple drawing, but one of my grandmother's prized possessions. So, of course, I used it on the cover. The book has about 50 recipes, Graham's greatest hits. Uh, she must have thought we were better cooks than we actually were, because these recipes, she wrote down the um, ingredients, but included no directions for how to actually put them together. And once I asked her, you know, how can I ever be as good a cook as you are, Graham? And she said, make it every day for 50 years <laughs> and watch for improvement. <laughs> I'm still watching. <laughs> um, I love the names of the recipes as well. For instance, Anna D'Amico's Cheesecake. <laughs> now, adding someone's name to a recipe card was an old school copyright notice. <laughs> um, and also a way of honoring a friend. Um, thank you, Emma, wherever you are. We still make your delicious cheesecake every Easter. My mother's family was from outside Naples, so the cookbook also includes many Neapolitan proverbs, sayings like, buy slow, sell fast, never return an empty plate. There are plenty of fish in the sea, that was dating advice. <laughs> Someone who was late was the last rose of summer. And of the mischievous, and you know who you are, my grandmother would say, only the horns are missing. <laughs> These sayings were sprinkled throughout daily conversations, and even though the meaning was not always clear, if you go to the well often enough, you'll drop the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> what was clear was the notion that wisdom existed. That wisdom, wisdom dressed in plain clothes, but wisdom nonetheless. Words are important. We lived in Bubble of Grace, in Little Rhodey, in Providence, sheltered, held on Sunday afternoons every week. We had dinner at my grandparents' home. Aunts, uncles, cousins, and after dinner, friends would come by, a lot of friends. And all of us, for many generations, were squeezed around an abundant table, a boundless table, for a meal. Sharing meals is good for you and for everyone else. There was a familiar sense of family, of community. We we're not one. We were many. We belonged. Now, architects and planners like to use a catchphrase, a sense of place, to describe communities that are authentically memorable, that allow people to connect in a happy, healthy way to the places where they live and work. You see, human beings sense what is real, what shapes our feelings of well-being, are not fancy or costly homes, but places that are, that are authentic. Growing up, this strong sense of place was irrevocably yoked to feelings of authenticity, of abundance, of safety, of belongingness. Feeling safe allows trust. And from trust springs courage. This is the courage of our Italian ancestors. And the kind of courage that dreamers in the DACA program and millions of other Americans must summon today. They are suffering right now as many 
of our relatives who arrived in this country 100 or 150 years ago suffered. Our families were discriminated against because they were dark and because of their religion, Catholicism. They were discriminated against because they were poor. They could not speak the language. Our relatives were victims of ill-defined but widespread hatred. And, you know, let's not forget that the Italians who were doing well in Italy did not come here. It was the southerners, the farmers, the peasants, our people who came here to find a better life, and they did. Because of their courage and sacrifice and their unbreakable bonds, I am here and you are here. Articulate educated, comfortable, confident. This is what they gave us. Let us express our gratitude by speaking up and defending those who came here after our own families did. For many of us, that image of the Sunday dinner table is very strong. The table, the gathering spot, is the heart of the room and the heart of the home. And by extension, the table, the room, is the building block of all architecture. The room becomes a house. One house becomes two, then three. There is a village, a town, a city, a nation. And it all arises, all of it arises from one table. Our feelings, our memories, our well-being, while gathered around the family table, is what roots us. Being rooted is to know your family, obviously, but your neighbors, and to live with them in peace, accepting their differences, and finding commonality. It means honoring the past by welcoming diversity and acknowledging the strength that flows from it. To conclude, let's draw from what we all know so well. Let's build new tables, new bridges to each other, and to strangers too. My career has been devoted to upholding that strong sense of family, of community, of real connection, of real places that my grandparents and yours built for us. This honor means a lot to me. Thank you.